Hello, my name's Julian Edgar, and I'm the author of the book you can see in front of you, Modifying the Aerodynamics of Your Road Car. What I want to talk today about is reducing drag, and reducing drag especially on square back cars, so typically wagons. And I want to start the process today by first looking at the idea of wake. Now the wake is the area behind the car of disturbed air. And the more energy that goes into the wake, typically the higher the drag that's acting on the car. You can think of it as a low pressure air that's actually pulling the car backwards. This particular Mercedes isn't a square back car, it's a sedan. It's got attached flow down onto the uh, trailing edge of the trunk or boot. And so you can see the wake is fairly small. So a small wake typically gives lower drag. It's not actually the size of the wake, it's actually the amount of energy that's going into the wake, but smaller normally equals better. So here's an example. Uh, it's not one of my cars. I do have a Honda Insight, but I didn't make this particular tail. You can see here the person has developed a long narrowing tail. It's narrowing in plan form as well as side view and you can see that the area of wake behind the car has been reduced substantially. This modification clearly improved fuel consumption because it reduced the drag. So there's an extreme example of reducing the size of the wake and therefore the amount of energy that's going into that air. On the other hand, here's a standard car, a Mitsubishi Mirage, but I want you to look at the top edge of the roof, the top trailing edge, and see how they've put a little extension there, and that extension is pointing downwards. Now, by pointing downwards, it's actually reducing the size of the wake. To, to contrast that, imagine if it was angled upwards, you could see that certainly the area of the wake behind the car would be increased. So this is an example of a manufacturer using a little uh, roof extension that's angled downwards in order to reduce, only slightly, but in order to reduce the size of the wake. Here's a car I used to own, a Skoda Roomster. Uh, I thought it was quite an extraordinary car, not in terms of performance, uh, but in terms of capacity and, and usability. It also didn't have that bad a drag coefficient, uh, but I wondered if we could reduce the size of the wake and therefore likely the energy going into the wake by changing the shape of the rear part of the roof. And here I am a few years ago, trialing some different extensions to the uh, rear of the roof. These are just corf board, a lightweight uh, corrugated uh, sandwich plastic board, easily cut with a knife or scissors. And here I'm just taping it into place. Always do mock-ups of aerodynamic modifications before making the proper ones. Um, very often you'll find you need to change shapes or even sometimes the modification doesn't work in the way you expect it. Now, notice here I'm extending downwards uh, the, the top of the roof and I'm also added some side pieces. Now, it was a trial. And the first thing you do with a trial, if you want to see what's happening with the airflow, is stick some wool tufts on it and drive past. Now, here you can see some different sorts of behavior. At number one, up on the top uh, trailing edge of the roof, you can see the flow is attached. The uh, wool tufts are in lines. They're not fluttering around and they continue to be attached through to number two. So there's flow attached from the roof back onto the roof extension. But what about on the side of the car? You can see that there's attached flow on the side of the car ahead of the extension, but you can see it becomes uh, separated. At number three, we can see the wall tufts whirling around. So the side panel, number three, was not working because the flow wasn't remaining attached onto it. Uh, whereas one and two did look pretty positive. Here I've increased the angle uh, of the uh, roof extension and the flow is still staying attached. And you can see I've also moved the side panel uh, in a way which um, uh, it has attached flow now, um, but I can't open the hatch anymore. I can't open the rear tailgate because uh, that, that's, uh, uh, that panel would, would um, have to lift off and you can see it's stuck into place. But I'm getting a feeling for what's actually needed in order to reduce the size of the wake. I did some testing on a dusty road with uh, no rear roof extension angled downwards and then with a rear roof extension angled downwards. 
and uh, the, the dust is kicked up by the, uh, the wheels. It's quite a fine dust. I waited until the sun was low in the sky near sunset and then photographed the car backlit and you can quite clearly see the different shapes of the wake. The top one standard, the bottom one with the angled downwards extension. So from a wool tough point of view and from a dust in the wake point of view, it was looking fairly positive at this stage. Here's the one that I ended up running as a test for many, many weeks. Um, you can see that the uh, roof extension is in place. You can see that the side extensions are really just to hold the roof extension in place. You're not going to get attached flow as we found with the wall tufts from the side of the car onto those side extensions. And you can see I also added a support in the middle. Now that support was needed because the airflow wrapping over the curved upper part of the extension was actually lifting it and changing the angle of the extension. And so I added that little support to hold it more rigidly in place. Did lots and lots of testing uh, with that particular extension and I recorded on long distance drives an improvement in fuel consumption. It's always very difficult to, uh, to, to measure small changes in drag, but I am confident, I was confident then and I remain confident that there was a measurable reduction in drag as indicated by a measurable change in fuel consumption and improvement, or improvement in mileage if you like. Now, here's an interesting thing. If the airflow, as indicated by the red arrow, is wrapping around the angled downwards extension, then there's going to be a lift component developed and a drag component developed. And the more downwards the angle of the extension, the more you're going to get a drag component uh, and not so much of a lift component. In other words, the yellow arrow will start pointing more backwards rather than upwards. So we're balancing two things. We've got a drag component caused by the aerodynamic force as the air wraps around the angled downwards extension, but we've also got less energy going into the wake. Now, which is the best angle, therefore, to give the, give the trade-off? I did lots of measuring of different angles, uh, different trials, and as the uh, clinometer shows here, 12 degrees uh, tended to work very well on this car. Interestingly, in the book, I looked at um, um, some. Uh, I looked at a lot of research, and the research that I looked at for angles of rear roof extensions were also pretty close to 12 degrees. So what I found in practice was pretty well matched by the research. So there was my final version, uh, angled at 12 degrees, an extension of the roof. Uh, side um, um, uh, panels to, to really give it rigidity and stiffness. And uh, as I say, I ran with that particular approach for, for many thousands of, of kilometers and was quite confident that I was getting a improvement in fuel consumption, a reduction in drag. It's all covered in my book, Modifying the Aerodynamics of Your Road Car. Uh, we cover quite a lot of uh, wake um, changing modifications that uh, are potentially going to reduce drag and therefore improve fuel consumption consumption and I also cover in the book the use of things like under trays, um, separation edges and so on in order to, to reduce aerodynamic drag. I recommend the book to you. Thank you.